Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen? And you know what I love about this season? And I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm one of these Christmas carol freaks. I start listening to Christmas carols in July. If Cirrus Radio, dear God, I thank God for Cirrus. But if they aren't there, I've got my records with Christmas. Do I have Christmas records in there? I do have Christmas records. Jingle bells jingle all the way, baby. You heard it this week running down the hallway. I also, I know, some people don't like Christmas music. I love Christmas music. I love this season. You know, and so the, Jesus is the reason. And we've become so commercialized. You know, everything is about buying this and buying that. And, you know, I love to buy gifts. And uh, she's watching, so I can't say. But I had bought her a gift, and I just brought it back yesterday because it, I just feel too, what's the word? Um, when, when everybody knows what you're going to do. Too predictable. So, Rhonda, no jewelry this year. <laughs> Buy her jewelry every year. I'm not going to do it this year. I'm not going to be predictable. But I love giving gifts. If you looked online when I posted about today's message, I had Sophia on there. Because there's nothing more exciting than watching a brand new baby start ripping apart, you know, the pre uh, Christmas present gifts. I love watching their faces. They beam. You know, Julian, he's only, uh, he's not, he's a year, right? No, he's got a year in February. Huh? Right, February? I'm going to give him a box because he's not going to know the difference. <laughs> but let me tell you, my granddaughter, who's now three years old, next week, this week, next week, this week, That girl, she's already put in her Christmas list. She knows what she wants. What I love about it is I love watching their faces just explode with excitement as they're looking at the present. And many times, that's what Christmas has become. And, and that's a big part of it because God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the greatest Christmas present we could ever have. But today I want to talk in the next few weeks, I want to talk about, about Jesus and the factor of the season of of giving that we're in. And you know, one of the greatest things that you and I can give is forgiveness. This must be a season of forgiveness. Now this becomes a challenge because many times we don't think about this. We call it Jesus is the reason for the... The what? The season. This is the Christmas season. We're now beckoning on the door of the winter season. One thing that many people forget is that seasons change. Let me let that sit for a second. We look at some things and we always see them as opportunity, but the truth is, is that not everything is a constant opportunity. Not everything is something that will not cease. Seasons change. And the fact is, is that Jesus, when he died on that old rugged cross, when he rose again on the third day, he created what was called the season of forgiveness, where you and I can call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Can I hear an amen? Where you and I, when we are filled with sin, we can call on him and he'll wash our sins away. He said, he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. God so loved us, he gave his son. Why did he give his son? So that we wouldn't be condemned, but we would be saved by the washing of the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen, the greatest thing that we have on this planet today is the forgiveness of Jesus. But many people forget that even the things of God are seasonal. In the old covenant, when Adam and Eve were on the planet, that was a season. Once they sinned, the season changed. And then we went into the season of the law, where animals were having to be sacrificed to cover the sins of the people. Innocence. Would always, have to be, would always have to die. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin, the book of Hebrew declares. So here we now have a new season that came on, and that is that God sent his son Jesus to die on that cross for us. I don't know about you, this is the greatest season we have ever been in and this planet has ever seen, except for the pre-fall of Adam and Eve. The first Adam brought death, but the second Adam, he brought life. You see, today we're sitting here in called the season of the church or the season of forgiveness where we have the opportunity and the privilege as the Spirit of God draws us to call on Christ, to have our sins washed away, to become new people. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What I love about this season 
is to realize something. You know, many religious institutions and churches, they preach a lot that God is just waiting up there to bash your head in with a big hammer because you're a sinner. And you know, the wages of sin is death. But what I love about this season is to really grasp a hold of this truth that Jesus loves to forgive you. We've got to let that sit for a second. Jesus loves to forgive you. This is why he came. You know, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, I just want to read that verse because it is so powerful. Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who, Rhonda, stop texting me. <laughs> who for the joy, if I shout joy, joy, that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is what it is. The Bible says that Jesus counted it joy when he endured the cross. How could he do that? Because he knew that if he died on that cross, he knew that if his blood was shed, <coughs> he knew that if you and I would all accept him, that he would love to wash our sins away. Some of you are carrying sins in your life that you feel that Christ cannot forgive you for. You've done things in the past that you believe that God will never let go. But I'm here to tell you, your Messiah, your Jesus, loves to forgive you. He can't wait to wash your sins away. He can't wait to make you new. He can't wait to restore you. This is what he loves to do. In fact, the verse, uh, the verse for today is Matthew 1, And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. This is a great opportunity. Some of you today are sitting there and you look back on your past and you know you've got sin, man. In fact, you're sitting here today and conviction is on you. You're sitting there today and you know that if you die, you're not going to heaven. You're hoping you're going to go to heaven, but you're not sure you're going to go to heaven because you know there's sin in your life. You know you're not living right before the Lord. And, and in your heart you're saying, but God can't accept me because of this and because of that. Listen, Jesus longs for you to call on him today. He longs to wash you in his blood today. He longs to call you son and daughter today. He longs to make you clean today. He longs to take away your guilt and shame. He longs to. He loves to. And the greatest gift that you can receive is forgiveness. How many of you are glad Jesus forgave you? How many of you are pretty much a Pretty good mess before you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. And then everybody else is just a liar. Hallelujah. Man, this is the great part about Jesus, is learning how to receive his forgiveness. Receive his forgiveness. I believe God's doing that right now. Some of you just need to talk to him right now, right where you're at. You're, you'll start to receive his forgiveness right now. You'll feel right now that lift off you. If you start asking him right now, you'll feel it lift right off, right in the service, right now, right where you're at, right by your watching by live stream. You'll feel the forgiveness come right into your room, and you'll feel the shame dissipate. It's not just the season of forgiveness for you to receive from Jesus, but also the season for you to forgive yourself. I found that the hardest person to forgive is not somebody else. The hardest person to forgive is yourself. Some of our lives were got messy. Can I hear an amen? Some of our lives are still messy. Can I hear an amen? You sit back and you look at your life and some of the things that you did, you can't forgive yourself. You can't allow yourself to be free. You can't allow that past to go to the past that will not allow you to move to the future. And God wants you to know today that this is not just the season for you to receive forgiveness from Jesus, but it's also the season for you yourself, come on now, for you yourself to finally forgive you. You've tethered yourself down for so many years You've not allowed yourself to accelerate for so many years. You've not allowed yourself to believe that what God says you can do, you can do. Because of your past, and the Lord is speaking to you today, and he's telling you so clearly, please, if I can forgive you, if I love to forgive you, it's time for you to forgive yourself. You see, I believe that that is one of the greatest things 
that halts the kingdom of God is when we ourselves no longer are willing to forgive ourselves. We hold ourselves into captivity. We hold ourselves at bay because of our past. Listen, you can never allow your past to destroy your future. Can you imagine if Saul, who became Paul, man, this dude was a tyrant. He beat up Christians. He put them in prison. He was a foul man. He held the coats as they stoned Stephen. He was a man that was zealous for religion, but he had never met Christ. But one day on that road to Damascus, he met the living Savior. He met Jesus, and Jesus changed his life. You see, but if Paul kept looking back and saying, well, I can't become Paul because I was once Saul, then he would never have written 13 books of the New Testament. He would never have perpetuated the doctrine that is set in order through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You see, there's a time in your life Yes, every one of us, if we could real time back, if we could have a massive eraser, if we could go back and relive a portion, we would all do that. There's something there in everybody's life. But watch, Jesus says this, you can't change the past. But I didn't come to have you live in the past. I came that you might live in the future. You see, God's got a plan for you. God's got a purpose for you. God's got a design for you. And you've got to let that past go. You've got to forgive yourself. can't change it you've got to move forward see this is the season not only to receive forgiveness from Jesus but to start receiving forgiveness for your for yourself and then the last portion and I, I, I told my staff I said I'm gonna be short today and they laughed at me I'm gonna be short today You need to live by faith, Brother Bruce. <laughs> this is not just the season to receive forgiveness from Jesus. This is not just the season. Oh, uh, yeah. How do, how do I say that? There are people in the room that aren't even wise enough to realize they need forgiveness. They've so overrode the Holy Spirit that they no longer feel the conviction and the Lord is bringing it back in a rush and in a gush. And you will have an opportunity to respond in a season of forgiveness. Forgiveness from Jesus. Forgiveness for yourself. But the last is, we need to, we need to start giving. Not another present. We need to start giving forgiveness to others. The greatest thing that you can give somebody in this season is that you forgive them. You ever met somebody who holds grudges? Man, they get old quick, don't they? Their face starts wrinkling. Then you just get around them and you start hearing them talk. Well, I was hurt. We've all been hurt. Are you a human? If you're a human, then turn to someone and say, I know you've been hurt. If you're married, turn to them and said, all right, I did it. <laughs> Not bad, huh? Here's the truth is that we've all been hurt. Well, I was hurt in church. Well, grow up. That's what I'm supposed to say with a smile. Grow up. Of course you're going to get hurt in church. We're brothers and sisters. Did you ever get hurt when you were home with your brother and sister? Hello? Did you get along with everybody at your home? No, my children, my boys hated me from the age of 14 to 19. And thank God they got a revelation that their daddy is good. <laughs> but we didn't get along with my sister Sherry. I love Sherry. She gave me a bloody nose one day. We were children. My sisters ganged up on me one time. They knocked me out. I forgive them, Lord. We don't get along with everybody. There's people in this church you're not going to get along with. You know what's always funny to me is, is uh, when a couple gets divorced. Not that that's funny. But when a couple gets divorced, 
What they say to me is, well, I've got to leave the church. I say, where are you going to go? Well, I'm just, I can't be in the same church as them. Then I said, you can't go to the same heaven with them. If you can't be in the same church, how will you go to the same heaven? You're going to go to the left side, they're going to go to the right? I mean, this is where we come to a reality that the greatest gift, there are people that are in this room, you've held grudges for 15, 20, 30 years, and you've not allowed a person to be free. But what you don't realize is that when you and I do not forgive, when we don't give this gift in this season, then what happens is it, the, the destruction is not on them, the destruction is on us. The destruction is not on them. The, someone said back here to say it again. The destruction's on us. When you don't forgive somebody, they control your emotions. They own a section of your life. How do I know this? It's easy. When you see them, you get mad. When you see them, you get irritated. So they control an area of your life you've surrendered because you refuse to forgive them, because you refuse to give them this season of forgiveness. You refuse to receive what you and I have received. How many been forgiven by the Lord? How many of you lived a foul life before you were saved? How many of you have sinned after you've been saved? Once? Twice? Three times a lady. For all have sinned. If a man says he has not sinned, the Bible says in 1 John, he's a liar. But you see, what I love about Christ is he's not sitting there and saying, you sin one more time and I'll never forgive you again. He is so faithful and he loves to forgive. And what has to happen in our own spirit is not only do we need to forgive ourselves, but we need to have a spirit of forgiveness coming from us. Now, it's not that you allow people to walk all over you. It's not that you allow them to take advantage of you. But you've got to forgive them. You see, because if your emotions are owned by them, then you don't own them. Listen now. If you stop talking to people, well, they're friends with so-and-so, so I'm not going to be their friend anymore, then they now own your relationships. Well, I'm not going to that church anymore because so-and-so goes. Then they own your destination and destiny. I don't know about you. I'm not willing to give my destiny to anybody. I'm not willing to give my destination to anybody. You see, forgiveness is for you and I. And this is what Jesus is saying. As freely as you've received, freely give. What it does is it sets you free from the bondage of being owned by somebody else. You see, this is the season of forgiveness. This is the season that we get to celebrate the Messiah coming and being born as a virgin and from a virgin mom. And you and I watching Jesus grow up. Listen, he came to save his people from their sins. And one of the greatest sins that we can do is not get what we've already gotten. And that is forgiveness. How many of you know you got to forgive somebody? Now listen, sometimes this is a process. Can I hear an amen or oh my? <laughs> forgiveness, many people in the church world have made it sound like you've got to be their best friend again. That's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is, you don't have to be their best friend, but they don't control you anymore because you've allowed yourself to forgive them for the wound that they've had. You know, I give the example all the time, but it is so pertinent because it's on my physical body that when I was a child, I was whittling backwards with my father's utility knife, which is a razor blade. I slipped. This was in the third grade, fourth grade. I slipped, and the razor blade went right down to the bone. There was no blood. It was such a perfect cut. I went to the doctor, and, and, and they put three stitches in, and Later on, uh, you know, the stitches maturated, and it was time to take them out, and my dad's cheap, so he said, I'll take them out for you. Anybody have a father like that? He wasn't a medical doctor. <laughs> Took out my stitches, and that night I had a basketball game, and I, I was point man. I, I know you, it's hard to believe, but I was point man, four foot 11. I turned, and I hit the guy who was pressing, and it hit my thumb, and it tore that wound open. It didn't, 
didn't get cut. It tore it open, and blood just started spurting everywhere all over the court. It was awesome. <laughs> they grabbed the towel, put it over my thumb, and when I got home, my dad says, ah, you don't need stitches. We'll just butterfly it together and put a popsicle stick on. Listen, I will never, ever, ever forget the experience. I have the scar, but it doesn't hurt anymore. You see, when we come to the place of truly forgiving people, it's not that you will ever forget the experience. It's not that you will ever forget the wound. But yet, there comes a place in your life when you forgive them that that wound, yes, you will always remember, but it does not hurt anymore. This is the season of forgiveness. Stop allowing people to control your life. And what I have found truthfully and honestly is that the majority of people that have wounded other people, it was accidental and not on purpose. How many people have hurt somebody else in the room? Amen. How many of you have been hurt by somebody? How many have been hurt by somebody at church? I promise the longer in this church, I will offend you. I will hurt you. I promise. But pastor, you're not supposed to. No, that's not true. The truth is, is that people are people, and sometimes things get done that aren't meant to be done. And we take a hold of that. We don't forgive somebody, and it starts to grow up. Listen, grown up unforgiveness is bitterness. And God wants to save you from becoming that crotchety old man and woman. That all you do is you got wrinkles that have been born on your face because you're so nasty and mean and vicious. You walk around and everything that comes out of your mouth is vile and venom and you can't wait to dissect somebody. You wait for somebody to do something stupid so you can revel in their stupidity. And if you can't find something, you make it up because inside you're so gangrene. You're so dead because you've allowed unforgiveness to come into your life. So I tell these couples, well, pastor, I just can't come to that church because I'm divorced now. Come to a different service. You better get used to this. You got a long time in heaven because the Bible makes a declaration. And it is so amazing. It is so clear. By shout, it is clear. Shout, it is clear. Listen, you won't like this verse. But it is clear. Matthew 6, 15. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive you. Selah. Yeah. Oh, for those who don't know, that means ponder this. Let's drop the microphone. They were all, look at the sound member going, no, no, Pastor, no. <laughs> See, this is where we are in the best season. You have the greatest opportunity this year to do the greatest things with this season of forgiveness. You can receive it because you need it from Christ. Can I hear an Amen. You can receive it for yourself. Some of you need to forgive yourself. You've just, you've just not allowed yourself to be forgiven from your past. And listen, Jesus forgave you. It's time for you to forgive you. And then some of you need to give forgiveness to somebody. It can come from a letter. It can come from a phone call. It can come from an email. It can come from a text. It should come in person. Oh, I'll end with this. I've told this story before. I think this is my second ending, right? So I got one more to go. <laughs> I had this man that stole 20 plus thousand dollars from my wife and I and displaced us from our house. Let me tell you, I started hating him. Listen, you can do whatever you want to me, but don't touch my family. I'll kill you with the love of Jesus. And I remember I'm out mowing the lawn, and I'm thinking of ways to help him disappear. <laughs> no, it really wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, I'm not from here. Thinking of ways to help him disappear. And the Holy Spirit said to me, is he worth going to hell over? And I said, that's not fair. He stole a lot of money. He displaced my family. We left the house that we loved, 
that we built specifically the way we wanted it, and now we're in an, uh, uh, renting a house down on Sing Sing Road. I lost 20 plus thousand dollars. Is he worth going to hell over? And I said, no. He said, then take him out to breakfast. You pay for it and ask his forgiveness. What? I had an opportunity. I had an opportunity to, to give forgiveness in a season. Or I had an opportunity to become a bitter old man, which means I wouldn't have been standing here today, which means you wouldn't be sitting there today, which means some of you would never have been born again. Your life has direct connection. I took him out to breakfast. We both ordered. I looked him in the eyes and I said, listen, man, I need to ask your forgiveness. Now, listen, I, let me tell you what I wanted to say. You jerk. You stole all that money from my family, all that work from my family, and I'm going to forgive you. That's what I wanted to say. But the Lord told me, he says, look him in the eyeballs. And this is what I said. I need to ask you to forgive me. Because I was having very bad thoughts towards you and bitterness towards you. And I would ask that you would, that you would forgive me. Is that something that you'd be willing to do? And he looked at me. And he said, well, of course I forgive you. No problem at all. And then he wanted to chit-chat. And I looked at him and I said, hey, man, you have a great day. I just paid for breakfast. Have a good day. Gone. I didn't even touch the eggs. Why? I didn't want to be his friend. But I didn't want him to own me either. My question to you, are you trying to tell me I need to stop? This is the greatest season we have in front of us. And guess what? This is the only 2017 Christmas season you're going to have. Some of you need to actively forgive people. This Christmas, you need to bury the hatchet. Listen, I'm not saying be their best friend. But you gotta, you got you to gotta stop allowing them to own you. And that's what unforgiveness does. And today I challenge you to be a person that will forgive other people. If you'll bow your heads with me this morning.